Hello and welcome back to another Wolves Wednesday, episode number nine. And today I'm going to be talking about the top three Wolves managers of all time. And that is because Wolves are about to announce the capture of a new manager, Nuno Espirito Santo, who's going to come in from Porto of, and Valencia and Rio Ave and bring in a whole backroom staff and all sorts. If you want to watch my thoughts on Wolves getting rid of Paul Lambert, I'll leave a link in the description down below. And be sure to subscribe to this channel as well to get my reaction as Wolves announce the news which is likely to come either later on today or possibly tomorrow. So the first manager that I'm going to talk about is one of, is Wolves' second ever manager, Jack Adambrook. Now he was one of the founding members of Wolves when it was St Luke's. He took over as manager in 1885, aged 20. He won the FA Cup in 1893 and in 1908. And after 1,125 games in charge over a 37 year period, took a leave of absence in 1922 due to ill health and sadly died a couple of months later. So he's somebody who truly gave his life to Wolves. From the age of 20 until his death, he absolutely was dedicated to the club. Manager I've chosen as number two is quite a famous manager. He managed Wolves from 1927 to 1944. Major Frank Buckley. Not only a legend at Wolves, but he also set up periods of success for Blackpool and for Leeds United as well. He was the precursor to Stan Cullis at Wolves, in fact brought in Stan Cullis and Billy Wright as players into the club. Played for an array of different teams as well, Villa, Brighton, Manchester United, Manchester City, Derby, Bradford, Blues, Norwich. He fought in the Battle of the Somme, well he was injured during that battle. He had a reputation for bringing through young players, particularly at the Wolves, and then later on at Leeds where he found John Charles. The famous story from Major Frank Buckley is of course the monkey glands rumour, which he started himself by telling the media that that's the reason how he got the Wolves players running for so long is because he injected them with monkey glands before each game. And then finally, without doubt the most successful Wolves manager of all time and certainly one of the most successful English managers of all time as well. Stan Cullis, who made 152 appearances for Wolves as a player between 1934 and 1947. I think as well, lots of these players and managers were affected greatly by the two world wars in the, at the start of the 20th century. Had they have not happened, maybe none of this would have happened, or maybe Wolves would have been an even better team. He won 12 England caps as well, and was part of the 1939 double horror team, where Wolves finished second in the league and runners-up in the FA Cup. Interesting story I found out about Stan Cullis. He could have had 13 England caps, but on a trip to Germany in 1938 he refused to do the Nazi salute and was therefore dropped from the England team. England went on to win the game, was the only England player to refuse. In 1948 he became Wolves manager at the age of only 31 and he became the youngest manager to win the FA Cup that season with a win against Leicester. In the 1950s, Wolves saw their greatest spell of dominance. They won three league titles. They came runners up three times, 1950, 55 and 60, and then third in 53, 56 and 61. In 1954, they beat West Bromwich Albion to their first ever league title. And then later on that year, in December 1954, they beat Honved in the famous floodlit friendly. The win against Honved wasn't just a good win for Wolves, it was a win for the whole of England because a couple of years earlier England had been demolished 8-0 at Wembley by Hungary. An English team to go and beat Hungarian team, a top Hungarian team with full of stars was a great result for England. Following a string of these uh, flooded friendlies, Stan Cullis, it was on the front of a newspaper as well, hail Wolves champions of the world and lots of teams from Europe saw this and thought, hold on. We're better than them. So there was a period of friendly fixtures against teams from across Europe, including Real Madrid, which led to then the European Cup being set up. Cullis once again missed out on doing the double in 1960. They lost out in the league by one point to Burnley, which would have made them the first club to have done the double, with Spurs doing it the following year. In the early 60s, then Wolves struggled a little bit with two bottom half finishes in between a fifth place finish. In 1964, Stan Cullis was sacked from the Wolves and he vowed to never work in football again. So do you know what he went to go and do? He became a sales rep. But that didn't last long and in 1965 he came back to management and was in charge of Birmingham City for five years until 1970 but never quite reached the heights of his Wolves days. And when he left Birmingham, he became a travel agent. But Stan Cullis left Wolves with a proud record, having played 748 games, winning 350, drawing 171 and losing 227. 
Despite winning all those games, he hasn't got the best win percentage. That record goes to Ted Vizard, who's got a win percentage of 48.9%. Although, that was only that was over 178 games during the war. Interestingly as well, Kenny Jackett's win percentage was 46% over 150 games. Maybe one day we'll look back at the great Kenny Jacket. Let me know who your favourite Wolves managers are. In my lifetime, I think Mick McCarthy has got to take massive credit for being the most successful manager of our generation. He managed to get us promoted to the Premier League and kept us there for two and a bit years before getting sacked. Kenny Jacket as well, although I joked earlier on, I think he will be looked back favourably in 10 years or so as restoring a bit of pride in the club and getting us back into the championship and nearly getting us into the playoffs as well the following year. Dave Jones as well, having terrible personal problems coming back to management with Wolves and get, getting us back into the Premier League after a long, long absence. And finally, to talk briefly about Pedro Espirito Santo, he's coming in with a big reputation. He's got a very good win percentage record. He's a young manager. He'll be looking to prove himself. He wants to manage in England. He wants to manage in the Premier League. And I think the best thing that we can do as supporters is to give him time to let him bring in the players he wants to bring in. There's already rumours about him bringing in a Portuguese centre-back called Miranda. Not that Miranda. So it's going to be a very interesting couple of weeks now when the transfer window opens. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to get fan reaction on all the rumours and gossip and if you like this video then subscribe and like if you've already subscribed thank you very much lots of people subscribed after my last video to do with Nuno Espirito Santo thanks for watching I'll see you next time bye bye